What's up everyone? Uh, this is going to be a small talk basics video. So if you haven't downloaded Pharaoh, please do so. Uh, I'm uh, I'm going to be going over syntax stuff. There's a lot of weird little tricks in Pharaoh that you can do. Uh, just to give you the gist of it, if you click anywhere on Pharaoh and go to System Browser, this is where you're going to write the chunk of your code. Uh, this is where your classes go. You can name a package here in this little category thing. So if I were to run this, I would make a class called name of some name of subclass, followed by uh, the package name here. But I'm not going to do that. Uh, this is where you can also search for stuff. So I just recently searched for regex. So I can go into I'm going to discard that. You can go into regex core, and then you have all your classes, and then a bunch of messages here. Uh, small talk is a little interesting. Not, I mean, I'm not really a fan of it, but uh, it's interesting in just the way it operates. Uh, everything is objects. It's the whole thing is perfectly object oriented. So what that means is that you send messages to objects, and objects can be anything from integers to booleans to whatever. Everything's an object. Um, as a result, it's not dynamically typed, or it is dynamically typed, which means that there are, aren't are really integers or anything like that. You declare a variable, and then you can just assign whatever you want to that variable. Um, but as we'll see, it's only kind of half dynamically typed because it uh, still works with conversions. So we still have to work with converting objects to specific types to work with them properly, as we'll see in this example. So what I'm trying to do here is kind of show some small talk syntax by showing a parsing example with regular expressions. It's going to be really kind of a basics video, so if you want to learn small talk in its entirety through this video, it's not it's not a good video for that. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. So I'm in the playground right now. I got it by just clicking going to playground. This is good for just testing code. Uh, this won't let you write any classes or or messages or anything. This is just straight up code just to mess around. Uh, so let's get started here. You always want to declare your variables at the top and you can do it between these two separator lines here. So I'm going to make something called parser object. This will hold our parser. Uh, this is an interesting way to deal with regular expressions because we can just put a regular expression directly between single quotes, which is a string by the way, single quotes are a string. So with that string, we can just do as regex, I'm going to do as regex ignoring case, so that we don't have to worry about lowercase, uppercase, whatever. And then we're going to make this parser object, we're going to assign that. So that colon equal sign is assignment, this up here is just a declaration. Okie doke. So now that we have our regex object, we can now parse. So I'm going to make another variable and call this matches list, or just match list. It's going to contain all the matches from our parser object. And so we're going to do match list. I'm going to assign it. Oops. I'm going to assign it to parser object. Oops. Matches in. I'm actually not sure if I can do that, so we can check. This is a good learning experience, so we'll go to System Browser. It's in Regex, and I'm using Rx Matcher. And we'll scroll down our message list to matches in. Ba -ba -ba. Right, I forgot to set up our string that we're parsing. So we'll do that. Matches in. Uh, and let's write a string here. Education about stuff. Okay, so now our matches list are, is, is, is a variable containing all of the matches. It's essentially an array. It's going to be all the matches here that match our regular expression here. So now we can loop through this. So loops are a little bit tricky. We can pass an argument called do to our array, which lets us, whoops, don't want to do after, which lets us loop through the array. So this is going to be our little code block. If you've done C or Java or whatever before, these little square brackets here are essentially your curly brackets for the loop. So this is going to take the argument each. It's our iterator object that we'll have access to. So each is going to be each of our matches. 
So each is its own object, again, of course, because it's perfectly it's a perfectly object-oriented language. So if we want to print off each match, what we can do is we can do transcript show. And then we'll do... I'm going to put this in grab. Uh, bracket. Uh, does it need brackets? Maybe not. We'll see. Add a string. Okay. I'll explain this in just a second. Okay, and then we can't forget to open the transcript. So what the transcript is, it's uh, essentially like an output window or like a console or something like that. So if you've ever done Java before, uh, it's like uh, it's like running a Java application in your, in your console window by doing Java space and then the name of your class. Uh, and if you've ever done like C, it's like doing GCC and then running your thing and then doing dot slash whatever. So, uh, But if you haven't, it's just an output window. It just shows you whatever you're printing doesn't do much else other than that. So in our loop, we're passing the argument do to our array, which means that we're going to iterate through each one of the elements in the array. And because of that, we need an iterator object, just an object that gets assigned to the value of, uh, of whatever we're looping through. So if you've done any C type language, again, if we had something like this, well, i is smaller than and I, oops, I plus plus, each would be the equivalent of saying like, oh, my array at value I just does something or whatever. That's the equivalent. So it's, it's our iterator object is the thing that we use to access what we're iterating through. Uh, here we're passing the show message to transcript. So here it's opening. So we open it up. We open up the transcript so that it's showing. And then show, I know it's a little confusing. Show actually just displays the message. So here we're passing the as string message to each. So we're converting each to a string so we can print it. The semicolon basically just means that we're passing another message to transcript. It just takes whichever, whichever class that you're currently modifying. It will it, it'll, it'll pass another message to that class. So we're passing the carriage return message to transcript. So we should be getting each one of our values as strings followed by a carriage return. So we'll do Alt A to select everything, then Alt D to run it. Lo and behold, we've got education about stuff. All right, so let's just look at a couple other little regex things. So I'll go to our uh, matcher again. Uh, <laughs> so sub expression, this will let you access some match at an index. So if we did transcript oops, transcript show and then match list no, it'd be parser obj. Parser obj. Sub expression one. Okay, so if we do this, oh, that didn't work. Ah, okay, that's why. So. If you want to use sub-expression, you have to just use matches. This kind of loads up matches into the parsing object. Uh, so we'll comment this out. Comments are double quotes. So we'll comment out our loop. And this should now just output education. There we go. So that's what that's used for. I personally prefer using match matches in because you'll get all of them so especially for that assignment for those in my comparative program languages class for the uh, the assignment number two for small talk oh man for parsing the HTML stuff matches in is probably a better option uh, so anyway I think I'm going to cut it off there thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe